Dom, 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 Dom. Hey, Dom. <laughs> Dom, it's been a rough uh, last four weeks for you, hasn't it? It has. It has. We're working around these COVID restrictions and doing the best we can. So um, it changes, right? It changes daily. Um, we've been talking to the convention center since April. We've been talking to hotels. Um, and many of these, uh, many of the personnel are furloughed, right? So we have a hard time getting a hold of people. Um, and then we've been talking to the county health department and, you know, things are changing there. So it's been interesting, but we're committed to, to have a national premier event. So we're so committed Tom, to figuring out. The national middle school duels, uh, you know, correct me if I'm wrong, started like five years ago. Is this year number five for the national middle school? This will be year number six. First year was 2015. Yep. 2015, right? So year number six, um, yep. you guys started out with it. It was not the event that it has grown into Dom. Uh, right. it started out at the Seagate center. Um, and, and all the years have been at the Seagate center. Year five, right. one through five were the first five events were at the Seagate center. And mm -hmm. You know, you it's grown, it's grown, it's grown, and it's grown into this like this just juggernaut of an event. Um, you know, beginning of November, I usually look forward to it, and I love promoting the event and coming to the event and working the event. But you know, so much has changed. Dom, um, tell me about Seagate Center. Tell me about Lucas County, and and tell me some of the. You know, it was a yeah. great, it was a great place. You had it at wow. a great place, and you wanted to have it there again, but kind of forced yeah. your hand, didn't they, Dom? Yeah, so um, we've been at the uh, Seagate Convention Center in uh, Toledo, Ohio, and um, what's great about the location is they have a hotel connected, um, so that's great for uh, attendees. Um, so I believe we got a couple things. One, the hotel's connected. Two, we're well organized. And three, we have the top teams in the country come in, and we're done by five o'clock um, every day. So no buys. Um, we got plenty of mats. And it's been great. Um, this year, um, because of county restrictions, we've had to move the event. Um, so we're moving it to the Dome. It's the second largest soccer facility in the country. Um, the square footage is like, I don't know, 94,000. It's something crazy. Um, yeah. Yeah, it's bigger than a football field in there. Um, and so we're good with uh, the, the Wood County. That's the, the county that this new facility is located in. And it's eight miles south of Seagate. So um, we're committed to making it happen. And um, we had to change locations this week. So that was trying. Um, and we're communicating with the teams and with, you know, spectators that are coming and parents. Um, and hopefully we can return to the Seagate, you know, in future years. You know, we love Seagate. You know, when, with something like this, it's such a logistical nightmare, Dom. I mean, you've got teams from from Dallas, Texas. You've got teams from Atlanta, Georgia. You got teams from Southern California. I mean, you got obviously New Jersey, Pennsylvania. David Taylor brings a team. I mean, you have put together a monster of an event, man. And it, like I said, it, it is amazing for me. I love to come watch it and come to cover it and, and, and promote it because I learned so much from them. I learn who the top dogs are. You know, it's like yeah. last year I got to interview uh, AJ Ferrari's dad, right? Uh, you know, and there's a – what's it? Witted. Witted. He, he's a Harvey Twister but has a club down in Texas. That was another guy I got to meet. Right. I love meeting all the people. David Taylor, obviously, I got to call one of his matches. Um. Uh, I think Mantanona, one of the Mantanona brothers was there last year with the Southern California team. I just pick up so much, man. And it's just like Buxton brings a good team. Great team. Minions out of Georgia brings a team. I mean, Don, yeah, pinna pinnacle. The event. Yeah. The event. Yeah. What do you think uh, you guys will do moving forward here? And, and do the teams, does that most everybody know that it's, it's still fly in the same place. You can keep your hotel we're just going to move seven miles down the road, eight miles down the road, um, just south in between Bowling Green and Toledo to Perrysburg, Ohio. Um, does everybody know it is the word out there yet, Dom? Um, I think that the teams know. I don't know that, um, you know, people outside the team know. Um, but it's 
the event will be live streamed by Track Russell this year. We're excited uh, for them to come. Um, Rudis will still be on site. Um, the, the, the major change for the event will be limiting, limiting, limiting spectators. So we're, we're limited uh, to 300 spectators how, for the state of Ohio. How do you determine that? And there's obviously somebody with a counter maybe, right? Do, do volunteers, coaches, athletes, is that a whole nother count of numbers? I, I don't know how this works. No, yeah. So volunteers and participants are excluded. Um, so it's just strictly spectators. Um, and our plan, is, it, we just did the math. So we have 32 teams. We divided it up, and that's nine per team. Um, we'll, we'll handle that, you know, with the teams. Um, we'll probably, you know, provide a, a registration link that will be limited to, you know, nine per team per day. Okay, Dom. So you and I were just talking about high school football off camera, right? They did the right. same model. Right. High school football, they gave each athlete and each cheerleader and each band member, I think, two vouchers, right? Vouchers. Correct. It's like a beer ticket, right? right. It's like, Correct. hey, get the beer ticket so that you can go then go buy beer, yeah. right? Yeah. Like, right. you get the voucher so you can go buy the ticket, right? Are you guys going to do a similar thing to that, Dom? Um, we're just going to provide, um, nine registration online per team. And then when they come on site, we'll get a list from the teams and then we'll provide them with a, a color band and then what, you know, nine per day. And we're okay. trying to minimize contact. Um, we're trying to keep it simple. Our goal is to run a well-organized event, really not looking to make any money this year. So we're going to lose some sponsorships. We're going to lose some hotel rebates. Um, we're not going to sell programs. We're not going to do a raffle. Um, we just want to run a wrestling tournament and keep this thing going. We you love know, wrestling. Yeah. I mean, and, and I've been a part of events where, you know, I, I, I the Kansas city stampede, um, one year I drove clocks and computers <laughs> out. Do you ever hear the story? No, no. I, I, a guy flipped his truck over coming from Newport, Rhode Island. He was going to the Kansas City Stampede, and it was a Tuesday, and he flipped his truck on Route 8 in Akron. Well, Joe Williamson, who you were working yep. with on, you yep. know, right, yep. Joe Williamson called me, and he's like, hey, man, we're not going to be able to have this event. You know, if you don't find someone to help me, we're not going to have our event anymore. And obviously, when you skip a year of an event, even the COVID year, right, it yep. really hurts the event, like Iron Man really hurts the event. And it, ironically, um, I drove 13 hours, 14 hours through the night through Kansas City, drove the clocks and the computers there, and then jumped on a flight and came back home, right? Yeah. I did that, and then they got to keep their event. And I always see this guy, Kerry Rolofson. He's an air traffic controller over there in Kansas City. He's the guy that runs the tournament, and he's always like, oh, my God, it's so good to see you. You're such a, oh, you saved our event. But they ended up canceling that event this year. You know, it's, it's, it's an iron, and they were going to pool wrestling, they were going to have JV kids have a separate, you know, or, and um, Owen two kids and junior varsity kids were going to have a separate tournament the next day. Yeah. And that, that tournament's gone. Talk about the importance of, of keeping the event, the ball rolling and, you know, yeah. Amen. Change. You know, this could change. This could change. Yeah, this so could change. Something could change. The wine could change. You know, everything's up in the air. I tell my students every day. Yeah. If you haven't learned well, anything from 2020, expect the unexpected. Right, right. And, uh, you know, we've watched other national events and they've been kind of chaotic and we've heard some, you know, stories about citations and um, all kinds of crazy bad press. Um, so we're kind of flying under the radar with that. You know, we're running a, a, a well-organized event. We have a full list of um, guidelines and protocols that we're going to be following. Um, we have a cover letter with it and a summary and we put together waivers. Um, so I'm looking to avoid all that and run a great tournament. And I think we're all tired of kind of the chaos and the up and down of all this, you know, watching college football, you know, get canceled and then it's back on. And, um, you know, I have a son that is an athlete at Ohio state and basically they found an off campus site and continue to work out and, and practice, you know, but they did it kind of on their own. Um, I, I think we're all tired of the heroics, right? I get being safe. I get the protocols. 
trying to be sensitive, you know, to all these issues. Um, but man, life goes on, right? We got to keep this thing going. Not yeah. looking to skip any years. When you talk to the Genoa wrestling club, you talk to, you know, Bob Bergman's head coach there. You talk to all these different Burnett trained wrestlings, another, you know, club that really helps out. How hard was it to convince these people that it was very important to move the event from Seagate to Perrysburg to the, to the soccer dome? Um, I think the, the biggest ally with all this has been the Burnett trained wrestling group. Um, they get it. Um, they're a first class, um, I don't know, elite wrestling club um, who will help anyone. Um, Scotty and Eric are fantastic. Jody is fantastic. Scotty's wife. And, you know, she kind of push, helped push this through. And so she gets a lot of the credit. We also have a lot of great allies. I mean, the, the wrestling club's been, been super supportive. Um, OAC in Ohio, they run our state organizations for youth wrestling. Uh, Jared Ofers and Jude have been fantastic, and they're uh, a huge partner with this. Um, so they also kind of help push this through. So, and then we heard from the teams. Teams are really begging us, please don't cancel this event. Um, um, so we're not we're not going to cancel. I mean, we're going. Is no matter uh, what, we're going. We're going to figure it out. Young Guns. Young Guns has been there before. Um, Coach Strip Matter. I know that uh, they come out of Minnesota. You got Pinnacle out of Minnesota that comes. Coach Lawrence. You know, those guys have been great supporters of the event, man. They have, Those yeah. are two of the best clubs in the country, two of the largest clubs in the country. You know, you've built some pretty good relationships with them. And I know Young Guns and there's West Penn Duels is another thing that you've competed with in the past. But Young Guns has sent teams here. It's amazing, right? And like, yeah. It, it, it blows my mind that you've been able to start up and, and there's weekends you hit with West Penn Duels. I don't know if you hit with them this year. Um, I – think we we try to avoid each other and we may not have been successful this year yeah you've hit Uh, with them a weekend or two out of these years you have yeah but the thing we try to do is we try to be the same every year so we're trying to be around veterans day every year we're trying to fit in a national calendar um you know there's a big event every two or three weeks you know through april here and you know so this is a good date for us um we're, we're probably locked on this date you know, forever here. You talk about losing sponsors and, and partners. Uh, I know that, you know, Guy and Defense Soap, is, uh, they've been involved before. I know that uh, you've had other partners, Rudis, you know, you've had them involved before. How do you lose a partner and what do you say to someone to draw them back in to, to be attracted to the event? Yeah, you know, um, there's the county, Lucas County. They've been a sponsor, so we're, we're going to lose them this year, but I'm confident we can get them back. Um, we've built great relationships with Rudis, um, Defense Soap. Defense Soap is sending a team this year, so they'll be there, and we'll have their products. Um, so the, the hotels, I mean, they're all hungry. I mean, when you talk to the hotels, half the staff is furloughed, so it's it's – it's been difficult to communicate with them, but um, they're all eager for business. Um, I don't see any issues there. It'll, it'll, it'll be back. It'll bounce back. Okay. Oh yeah. Yep. Uh, from year one, right? Year one, you and I talked about this. I, you know, flow wrestling was able to jump on board the first year. And then, you know, they were the streaming for the first five years of the event. Now you're jumping over to track wrestling. What have the growing pains been like for national middle school duels, you know, national middle school duels, it's a big name, and, and it's one of the top dual tournaments for the middle school that there is in the United States of America. It's on everybody's calendar. It's marked, right? Yep. What What are some of the growing pains, and what was it like from year one to year five with your growth in the national middle school duels, Dom? Yeah, I think early on it was just getting the right number of teams and then, you know, determining the right layout for the event um, and then bringing on sponsors. So. I, I'd be guessing, but I think the first year we had like 12 teams. Um, now we're at 32, and we could have 50 um, if we had this, uh, the size, right? Um, venue, you're saying? 
brand new, right? Right. I don't know if this is the year to jump from thirty. No, to 50, no. So, right? <laughs> so last, no, we've been at thirty-two, so we're going to stay at thirty-two. Um, maybe in the future we'll we'll grow to more teams. Um, post COVID, post COVID, right? Post COVID, yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I mean, this has just been such a a, a game changer of a pandemic and you know we had swine flu we had h1n1 uh we had avian bird flu we've had uh sars right and right. None of those are you know i don't think those compared to this and, and i want to i want to say swine flu i'd like to go see that list that i just named off the top of my head to which ones they actually call the pandemic right i want to say swine flu was right but this has just been such a challenging thing you know um, National Middle School Duels hopefully is going to survive it. And that, you know, I'm kind of excited about that. Um, I'm just, I love the event. I think it's a great yeah. event. I love how uh, there's no downtime. It, it, you're done at five o'clock. The parents love that. They're at, well, now they're going to be at Ralphie's. Now they're going to be at Frickers. Now That's they're going right. to be at E-dubs. Now they're going to be at all those local Toledo places, right? Paco's. Right. They're going to be at all those places, right? And it's going to be a really cool uh, experience for them. And I think that's what a lot of them run. The dirty birds, another one I know they like to go to that, that like yeah, it, mud hens bar. It, right. And I know they like that. And Toledo's a good sports town for that. You know what I mean? Yeah. When you talk about the event too, um, I think one of the attractions of the event is not having a buy and being done early. So I've been to tournaments where, you know, you start at eight one day, start at 10 another day. There's a long buy in between. So we will probably always, keep the same format. Let's get four or five rounds in, no buys, and give the evening back to the team so they can have some fun. So um, I know when I was doing road trips, loved my evenings with the coaches, you know, had a lot of fun, you know, and then, you know, some tough wrestling during the day. You've got a ton of programs that kick into this, a, a lot of high schools. You know, you mentioned OAC, you mentioned Burnett Trained. What's the volunteer staff like, and and how do you guys get the amount of volunteers yeah. that you actually have for the national middle school duels? No, that's a good question. I'm glad you asked that because um, we got some good allies. So, Lord's College provides the nursing staff for the first aid, and they volunteer their time. And they just started a wrestling program in Sylvania, Ohio, right? That's right. That's NAIA. Right. That's right. Um, one of the nurses is a Genoa resident, so she's a big fan of um, wrestling. Um, and then we use um, UT, University of Toledo has a wrestling club, um, and so they volunteer, so they're on site. Um, and then we use local high school wrestlers and, and then parents from Genoa Wrestling Club um, my home club and uh, Burnett Train Wrestling. So we get a we have about over a hundred volunteers easily. Um, yeah, and about uh, seven hundred wrestlers, and typically we have over twelve hundred spectators. So we're going to be limited to three hundred this year. When you look at that, you know you take a hit, right? You obviously take a hit. Yeah. You take a big hit on on admission there, right? How do you keep the event? What, why, you know, how did you convince your people? Hey, we're, we're probably going to maybe break even this year. Yeah. Um, but it's important to have this event. And what was it like talking those people into this? Cause you, it's not easy, Dom, when you're asking people to give their time. Yeah. Right? Yeah. No, it's, it's, that's always a challenge. Um, our club's been rock solid that supports this event and you know, because of, um, I don't know, the national landscape we with the COVID, we've actually met, you know, triple what we usually meet. You know, usually we can plan this, you know, via emails, um, but there's been so many required conversations. So we're doing all kinds of conference calls. And so I would say that, you know, planning efforts tripled easily in time. And, um yeah, navigating everything, you know, everything changing four weeks out. That's not fun. No. Um, Logistics are a nightmare anyway. Yep, yep, yep. And, and you know, we, we have all kinds of deliveries happening and, you know, coordinating all that. So how many mats this year, Dom? 16 
running 16 mats. Was last year. 16, yep. And are we still looking at the same teams from, from Texas? And what, what do we know as far as team listing? Yeah, yeah. So we got a good group. Um, looking at the list here in front of me. So we got 4M from Pennsylvania, Burnett Train, Cali Gold, um, Defense Sub, Dundee, Dynasty, who's a two-time returning champs. They always have a lights-out team. Dynasty from New Jersey. Dynasty from New Jersey, yep. So there's, yeah, isn't there tough. another one from uh, – there's another one called, like, Dynamite from Texas, uh, right? There's, yeah, there was a Dynamite from Texas, uh, but there's Buxton from New Jersey, too. That's always tough. Um, I, I yeah. want Jeff Buxton at one of the events. He's always sends other coaches, right, because I know he's got a lot going on and he's an RTC coach. But yeah. I, I, Jeff Buxton's awesome. You ever, you ever met Jeff Buxton? I have. Great guy. Really cool guy. I know all of them. I don't know him personally. Right? Yeah, pretty pretty nice guy. I like him. And he's yeah. pretty honest. I like him. Yeah. So we got some new teams coming in too. Um, we got Minions. Minions won it one year. Minions are back. They won one year. We got a, uh, New York Bombers, Pinnacles back. Um, P-O-W-A. Uh, it was Paulson last year. Lawrence sometimes has to do like, a, a, he'll coach the first in and Sometimes he has to fly back for the second day to run like club practice for Pinnacle up there in Minnesota. And he's an awesome guy too. That's another one. I really like Lawrence, man. He's an awesome guy. Yeah. And you watch these, these guys coach from these national programs and um, they're just level headed and no rustling and get the best out of their, their club. So it's, it's motivating watching these, Coaches and wrestlers. The, 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 the level of wrestling lights out. I mean, I'm every year I'm impressed at um, how tough these matches are. And um, sometimes a team may have to wrestle a second team twice. And, I mean, it's, it's, it's fierce. Some fierce competition going on. What's your favorite, like, memory story or something that's happened at the event that's like, maybe it's not necessarily a bad thing or a good thing, but what, what sticks out to you about national middle school duels and, and, you know, this monster of a tournament you guys have built and such a competitive tournament, and you, you know, you're, you're drawing – I mean, I'm just going to call it I, – I, I would say David Taylor is a heavy favorite for 2021 in the Olympics in Tokyo, you know, barring injury. You're drawing him, and he, and he shows up and he coaches. Right, right. He coaches his guys. He's not on his phone. He's – you know what I mean? Like, he's yeah. engaged. He's coaching the kids. And I'm just so impressed that David was there last night – last year when it was coaching – but, you know, and then you got Brandon Paulson, you know, another guy who's multi-time world team member. David's a world champ. Paulson's Olympian, right? I mean, these guys are just, you know, I love seeing the people that come in. Obviously, Buxton, one of the greatest high school coaches in the history of high school wrestling. And, and you get all these people there, man, and it's just it's unreal. Cooperman was there last year. I missed him. I mean, there's just, like, people there. It just I just can't believe the who's who. But what's your story? Who showed up? Who's what? Has anything shocked you? What's your memory and, and best thing about building national middle school duels, Don? I don't know if um, I have one memory, um, but I can't emphasize enough how um, impressed I am with the wrestling and the level of wrestling that increases every year. So, um, I mean, these teams are talented um many of these wrestlers are the future stars of the sport and go on to wrestle in you know d1 programs and beyond i'm anxious to see you know some of these young wrestlers that have wrestled through the tournament where they end up you know in college um i i would be um not surprised to see these young stars wrestle there um and I'm just – I'm impressed with how everything's come together. I think the pieces have fit. Um, I think it's a nice, tight package, and um, enjoy it, especially when it kicks off. So once it kicks off, I can relax. Here's the million-dollar question for me to you. You started this event when your kid was a freshman in high school. Yeah. You have not directly benefited – and then you have other kids that wrestle, right? You have an older son that wrestles. Was it Damien? Yep. Damien was a state finalist, and you have Dylan. And then your youngest son now is 
a senior, right? The senior, yeah. What's his name? Devin. Devin, okay. And Devin had shoulder surgery, right? Correct. He's had he's had some some injury issues, but maybe you but Devin didn't he wasn't like Dylan's caliber as far as you traveled all over the country with Dylan. Right? Right. Yep. And Devin wasn't into it kind of like you know Dylan was. So you didn't directly benefit from your kid who was best at wrestling, a guy who's on Ohio State's roster looking for a starting spot this year. What did Dom D'Amelio really gain out of this event? Because let's be honest, you know, I got two kids. You know, I'm going to be, I'm going to be very Ferdinand and Thomas centric when I'm doing things. I'm just, that's just me being honest. What did you yeah. really gain from starting this event, Dom? Well, we, you know, we certainly did it a uh, um, couple things. One, to generate some, you know, revenue for our club. Um and two, to provide a, a, a national level tournament in the area. There really wasn't anything consistent in Ohio. Um, and I believe we have a good formula. Um, like I said, when I traveled, I appreciated having my evenings. I appreciated a well-organized event. Um, and I appreciated the, the camaraderie. Um, man, the dads and the coaches that I traveled with, um, those are memories I will – always uh share and i actually miss it i i you know i hope my i get opportunities to travel here in the future because i miss traveling tournaments it's a lot of fun um so i want to provide that same experience for others um and feel like there's been some lesson learned learned along the way that that we're applying here um i feel like i've been to most major events and maybe not all of them but i've i've you know, I've been to Nebraska and Iowa and New Jersey and, you know, Florida and Oklahoma, wherever I've been to those states, did their tournaments and um, had a great time, great experience and great memories. Your daughter's the only one who's married so far. <laughs> right. You need to hurry up here. That's what I just heard. I just heard that your daughter needs to have a grandchild so that you can start doing it all over again. That's what I heard at least, Tom. I don't know. Yeah. Maybe yeah. I'll put words in your mouth. I don't know. Yeah, my wife's ready for grandkids. We'll see. <laughs> <laughs> Your daughter's, was she 25, 26? 20, oh, geez. She's going to be 25. She's 24. Tell her, t- 24. Yeah. Come on, Dom. It's, it's, yeah. cool. it's ticking. Let's go. We need grandkids over here. Um, and then uh, Devin is a senior, right? At, at Genoa. Right. right. And so this whole thing, I don't let you get off the hook on National Middle School Duels. Is there anything else you want to add on National Middle School Duels? No, appreciate the opportunity. Looking forward to seeing you at the event. So, Zeb, you'll be there, right, for us. Um, do some commentary. Yeah, of yep, course. All, broad, all matches will be broadcast. Yep, yep. I'm just I work letting with everyone know that you're going to be there. I work and with Tech Wrestling. I work with them. I work with Andy Hamilton and Tech Wrestling. That's who I work with now. Those are my guys. Um, but you don't get off the hook. Give me anything. I want to hear some Ohio State stuff. I want to hear some Genoa stuff real quick. Did you realize when your son was an eighth grader or was a middle schooler, a sixth grader, I remember being exposed to him wrestling at the OECs as like a third, fourth, fifth, fifth grader, right? Yeah. I used to call his like elementary school, his grade school matches. Remember I called all his finals. Yep. Yep. Did that crazy thing, that rivalry with Jordan Crace. Um, did you ever imagine that you, Dom D'Amelio, with Bob Bergman and the Genoa coaching staff would put together the greatest Division Three wrestling team in the history of Ohio? Did you think that would happen? And don't the, – the, it's not up for debate. It's not yeah, up for debate. no, you no, no. I, you got the champ record. It's, it's not a debate. It is – literally, did you think that you guys were going to be a, the architects of that at Genoa High School? With I think the, 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 the goal was always to – win a state team title um and if you know only one person won a state title that wouldn't have been wouldn't have been worth it why i may i may as well have been a free agent dad um if that was going to happen um so i think the the thinking was you know my my son dylan his his class was, was special um and that you know by his senior year that they would be fighting for a state title um Sophomore year, they they took second, and they just they just rose up, and 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 I saw that this the group, um, just had 
was battle tested. They had the, 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 I don't know, they had that swagger. They weren't, you know, you go to a big event and you see some people tighten up and, and this crew did the opposite. They just, they let it fly. Um, I really didn't like that second place finish. You know why? Yeah. Yeah. James Lamont, he knows why. And you know why? Yeah. Yeah. We love our rockets. He right? Guy, right. He pinned right. his guy and then you guys jumped Oak Harbor for runner up, didn't you? Yep. I don't know how Oak Harbor was runner up. Was it just Thorpe in the finals for him? I can't even remember. Uh, they had a tough team. They, they, they won oh, districts. They, and they won sectionals. They had, they had a tough team. Do. They had, they had, Okay, yeah. Now they had a, they had like two or three guys take third. The Bruce Renshu made the finals, and then Thorpe won. Right? I think that's the team, right? Right. Yeah. So they had a. Okay, it makes sense now. Like I didn't. I was trying to rewind it in my head, but you guys were runner up that year, and you came kind of out of nowhere. I thought, right? Yeah. Yeah. So that that gave us confidence. So right there when that happened, we knew we're 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 there for for state titles, and that just snowballed into a ton of confidence. And then we got some really other good wrestlers come in, like Contos and, and Dusty Morgillo and the Sanchez brothers and um, and Lamanji. And then, you know, Genoa guys rose up. So it was it was a good – it was good. It was a good process. Yep. Learned a lot. Why Genoa? You know, you're a stretch guy. Why? And I, I know stretch doesn't have wrestling, but you could have gone there and – you could have been Dom D'Amelio and been like, hey, I, I'll, I'll run this tournament. We'll fundraise. We'll, we'll get it. Yeah, yeah, no, I mean, my why kids. Do that? I'll do this, my, do that. You, why? Why Genoa? You know? Yeah, yeah my, my, my kids are going to Genoa, um, and, but that wasn't going to be the defining factor. Um, but um, I don't know. At the time, I felt like there was a lot of good teams but no great teams. So why not it be us? Right. And there was no super team in the area at the time. I mean, there, there's certainly been super teams that, that come that through. That area has never had a super team. Yeah. That area has never had a team. You know, the Walsh has had it. Maple Heights has had it. Right. Chanel's had it. Uh, all the Northeast teams have had it. Reedy had it in the 80s. Bishop Reedy had it in Columbus in the 80s. Yeah. Um, I know that Moeller's had some teams. Um, LaSalle had obviously had, they, they, those are super teams. They put together literally yep. super teams. Yep. Where it's like you, it's it's all you know. Obviously Graham, right? We know that. But they're, they're, Northwest Ohio has never had a super team. When North when when Delta won in '89, it was with Matten, it was with Centobin, and then there was some other you know role role players. But yeah, nobody's ever done what you know. Maslin Perry's had super teams. They had four state champs one year. Yeah, no, Delta's had some good teams. I think Edison had, had a really good team last year. Never they, had a super team. Yeah. You know, even that Edison team last year, that I don't I don't think they can win this year. They've had some guys leave. They had, you know, Brewer at 195. He graduated. He would have won state, I think. They lost some guys to graduation. They lost some guys to transfer. Even that team last year for Edison wasn't a super team, right? Um. And, you know, you've, I really feel for them because there's the year they would have won, they would have won last year. Yeah, Edison for sure. Won. No doubt about it. Is there yeah. any doubt in your mind? Nope, no doubt in my mind. Edison no, would have won, Herms and I really feel for Coach Herms, Hermes. Sorry. Um, you know, I feel for them, but they're, you know, you put have put together the only Northwest Ohio super team, even the Doc Loeffler years at St. Francis. I don't even think they ever had, like, a super team. He did beat Maple Heights. Yeah. <laughs> So may, maybe they had, you know, an old school super team with Carl Pankratz and guys like that. But like, I don't know, man. I think you guys, you, you had six state champs. You know what that yeah. happened? Yeah. yeah, you know, the, the, the only thing that's frustrating is to maintain. So once you have a great year or two to sustain it. So, um we didn't do that last year. Um, and I think that's the trick, right? You see the St. Ed's and uh, the Grams and, and these other programs that for decades are at the top. Um, so the, the, the goal now is to find some consistency. That is what John Heffernan told me last year. I don't know if it was last year or two years ago. And the thing he's most proud of about St. Edwards yeah. is the consistency year in and year out. Like, Amen. so yeah. proud of that. Like, he told me that. He goes, we're good every year. We're competing for a national title every year. And that guy brings Wyoming Seminary into his gym and Blair into his gym. 
and they try to bring Malvern Prep into his gym, and they do a super quad. And he's like, he knows they're outmatched, right? Like, yeah, right. Those teams are drawing international students. They're drawing guys that are just like Lackland, Lackland McNeil was. He's like an. He's from United Arab Emirates and Canada, and he's really good. But like, you know, you're dealing with these guys. It's just like these programs are getting guys from California. They're getting guys from you know, Cody Chittum's from Tennessee. I mean, he was on, he was at the national middle school duels. I remember watching them and I just, I remember seeing all these guys and I'm just like, how is it possible for us to compete with teams like that? You know, how, St. Ed's right. the standard of high school wrestling. They have a hard time competing. Right. And you guys did something where you put together a super team, Dom. It was unreal. What do you do consistently moving forward besides have more grandkids? <laughs> what do you do? Yeah, I think I think the, the goal now is to create a system that can that continues and contains its or you know continues to grow and maintain some level of excellence, you know, like the St. Ed's and these other programs. Grand, um, Grand, yep, yep. Wadsworth, so, Wadsworth, yeah. Maslin Perry. You know, they're there every year, man. It's just it blows my mind. And All I think right. it's, yep, go ahead. I, no, it's, yeah, go ahead. I want to hear what you think. Of uh, it. I was just going to say, no, I think too, it's a little bit of a numbers game. So, you know, being a, at a small school, um, you know, constantly recruiting, try, constantly trying to, you know, grab football players or Russell. And so it's a little bit of a struggle being consistent. Speaking of recruiting, tell yeah. the story about your heavyweight. Tell me the story about getting your heavyweight to come yeah. up. Yeah, that, our that is the ultimate the recruiting story ever. Isn't his grandpa Dennis Hobson? I don't know who his grandpa is. I think his grandpa is Dennis Hobson. I'm not joking. You remember he played for Toledo? Yeah. I my mind. I don't. Is, I don't. I don't. I didn't hear that. But our heavyweight was. I think was, his grandpa. My dad told me my dad's crazy. But yeah, I don't. I don't know that. Check, um, that, check that. Check that. Yeah, check I'll that. fact check, check, that. check on that. I can't do That's it in real, real time right now, but. Was it Noah Cook? Is Noah it? Cook, yep. Noah Cook Tell was that story about recruiting him. I'll, I'll, did Bob recruit him or who was it? Bob recruited him. So he was in the hallway his freshman year and, and uh, never wrestled. And this lanky, tall kid who had, came from kind of a, a, a tough home situation. And Bob talked him into coming out, bought him a slushie. And, uh, um, and then did he, he got beat up, you know. But he, 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 did he give him something in his room or like he had a – Ice cream bar or something or something, something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, guy took third in the state for you, didn't he? Took third in the state and and now he's he's at um Ashland throwing uh discus and shot, you know, and he also had uh wrestling offers but decided to go down the track route. Wasn't he like a state runner up in track? Yeah, yeah. And the shot of the disc. Disc. Yeah. Got this guy. Yeah, he's a good athlete. Ball, yeah. Man. No, he became a good athlete. He just he he one of those guys that blossomed and he's still growing. You see him now and he's like, I don't know, six five, six six, you know, two sixty five and growing. I mean, he's solid. I'm not gonna lie to you. I really like that he went the track route. I'm, you know, college wrestling's not for everyone, and that kid's a really nice kid. Yeah. You is. know what I mean? And I don't know if he had the real like the uh, you know, to really want to be a college wrestler. You know, so I really I feel good. And a guy like that, you know, the sky's the limit as far as with his length and he can get footwork and get powerful now, because I don't know if the guy's like a powerful guy yet. You know what I mean? Yeah. I think he's someone who could, he's he might be a late bloomer and you could see the guy be a multiple time NCAA All-American at Ashland in a, in a shot disc, weight throw, whatever else. Right. Yeah, I agree. I That's agree. awesome. That, yeah. But you guys, I know you guys had to do some recruiting in the hallway. Bob's told me some stories. And uh, the, what was crazy is the one guy who won the state duels for you under Kezada didn't come out as a senior. That 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 was a guy. It was another guy, like a guy you got out of the hallway, right? Right. Like, right. I just and then not to come out as a senior, but you know I've I've heard of worse ones than that. Justin Shagnon from Clyde, he won the state in wrestling, and he and he kicked the winning state football field goal. Didn't wrestle his senior year. Won the state. They won the state. He didn't come out the next year. Wow. He had other stuff going on, which whatever. And we don't know. I don't know their stories, but 
Yeah. You know what I mean? It's not like it was like that, right? Right. You know, I think, and I, uh, I think Delta had a guy that didn't come out as that was a state champ, Beverly. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah. You know, so there's, or he was a runner-up, or whatever he was. And state champ. Yeah. Yeah, state champ. And you know, yeah. we, don't, we don't know those kids' stories. So to keep Cook out, how you guys did was amazing, though, because Cook was just like a, he should have played basketball. Yeah. He should have played basketball. Yeah. No, and he he uh, yeah he really improved. It was pretty cool seeing him blossom. I mean, he missed a bunch of events, too. I mean, he would show up and he'd have, like, a little pimple on his face and the ref would flag him and he he couldn't wrestle, you know, just stupid stuff. So he, he went through a lot of a lot of uh, obstacles to be a, a great wrestler. How many times state placer was he for you guys? He was a – I thought he took, like, seventh or eighth his junior year and third his senior year. Yep. Yeah, he, that that's a great story, and and that's you guys such a small such a small community, you know, hundred kids to a graduating class, something like that, right? Maybe one right, twenty. Right. Month. Yep. And to do what you did it was it was just amazing. All right, last thing, and I'll let you off the hook. And you gotta be careful here. You gotta be careful because right. there's things that Coach Ryan, Jagger, Straval, Bo might not want you to share, or even your kid, <laughs> right? So you be careful here. Walk, walk, you know, think, think before you tell me stuff I don't want because I don't want dirt and I don't want to just put this out here to smear Dom but what's going on with the Buckeyes and and what are you hearing from your son and what what's the weight he's going to go 41 33 what's Dylan D'Amelio looking like for the Buckeyes and and, and yeah I mean from the you know I don't know that I'm on the inside but um I do follow as close as I can but I know that they're crazy deep I mean they're going to have a ton of you know people contending at different weights um Dylan's hoping to wrestle 141. He feels good. Um, he got healthy in the offseason. He looks really good. He's working hard. He's massive. Yeah. Guy yeah. Burnett showed me a couple Instagram pictures after he was working out at like the old school gym. Yeah. He is huge. He looks yeah. like 165 pounds. He yeah. Looks, and jacked. Yeah. I mean, he 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 he's hooked. I mean, he loves it. I mean, he loves wrestling. I think that's a big part of wrestling. There's a lot of really good wrestlers who don't like wrestling. Um, my youngest son, Devin, I mean, it's, it's, he doesn't like wrestling. He does it because he's good at it, but he's, he doesn't love it. Um, a lot of college wrestlers don't love it. Um, it's a grind. It's a grind. But I think one of Dylan's biggest assets is he's a good athlete and he loves wrestling and he's a student of the game. I've always he, said that about him. I always thought, you know, he was just so, astute and he cares so much about it because i think you just can't make kids care you really yeah, can't right, like, right. you can't, can't coach put our that. care no. into them you know no you can't want it for them right and that was right. like, my brother tate had a big problem with that like he wanted his kid to be so good but then it came to the point he's like i really can't want it for him right and this kid's a late bloomer doing a good job at oak harbor and you know once again him just like edison he got robbed of a really nice opportunity. Every kid did last year. Yeah, right. Every kid right. got robbed, but I was really excited about the trajectory of Wyatt. But it's just like, you know, what could Yeah, you we do? had two defending state champs that couldn't wrestle. Yeah, you, um, there you go. You know, two guys didn't yeah. get to defend their state titles. So, you, so obviously, but here's the thing about those two. They both already had state titles. Right. It's not like it's not right. like, like a Nate Burnett. Nate Burnett didn't get a chance to to make a run at the title, right? Right. Uh, Patty Gallagher doesn't get a chance to show he's the best guy in the country, right? It's right. The best guys in the country, and his state tournament got taken from him. That kid from Legacy Christian is unreal that just committed to Ohio State. Gavin Brown is unreal. Have you seen him, Russell? I have, yep. He's yep. unreal. That dude is really good. When I saw he signed, I was like – because I saw him this summer, and he was just – just woodshedding everybody. I was like, yeah. oh, my God. And he's like yeah. – he moves different. He's just – reminds me a little bit of, like, a less powerful Carson Karshala. You know what I mean? He's, like, real smooth. He glides, and he attacks a lot, too. And it's like – but a guy like that can't win four state titles. Seth Shoemate can't win four state titles. It's, right. It bums me out. I feel better for guys like uh, Spencer Lee now with the new situation, you know. Spencer Lee gets a chance to win four NCAA titles still. You know what I mean? He lost last year. But he gets this year and next year now. You know that, right? 
Yep, yep, yep. I saw that. Yeah. Same thing with Yanni. Yeah. Eligibility. Yeah. Yeah, but you know, Contos don't get that. Contos don't get that. He doesn't get a right. chance. To, he lost his senior year. Blake Saito doesn't get a chance to win a state title. Ah, uh, and I just you know it's Northwest Ohio guys, but you really feel for those guys, man. You know when I when I look at those guys that they really did the work, man. They really did the work, and it just. Got- yeah, yeah. I mean, I, 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 my heart bleeds for these students and athletes. You know, I think us adults will get over all this. Um, you know, we're not missing that much, but definitely looking forward to getting through this COVID situation and being and continuing on with the life. Will Ohio State have a season? I, I know yeah. what the plan is. Yeah, and yeah. Moms. Honest opinion as a tournament organizer, coach, a dad, a university employee, all everything you're seeing right now, you're a pretty smart guy. You're, you look at the landscape pretty well. You understand yeah. the assessment. Will there be a Big Ten season? Will there, will there be an NCAA tournament? Well, I know that every Big Ten coach is fighting for a season. And hopefully, you know, cooler has prevailed and they continue to figure this out. So, you know, I'm hearing that there's going to be – you know, a schedule starting in January, hopefully. Um, I don't know that a schedule has been released yet. Um, I know they just got in the facility this week. They did. They are They are in the facility just, now? Yep, yep. Just this week they got in the facility. Yeah, hey, hey, if there's a facility where you can social distance and wrestle, that's yeah. the facility. Yeah, biggest one in the country, the right. The Hall, right? right? The Taj yeah. Mahal. It's crazy, Dom. Totally agree. Madness. I, yeah, I don't even know what else to say, but. Could we see Dylan DeMillo at 133? Is that a thing? Um, I, 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 it's been discussed. I don't know that he can make it. I mean, he's 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 pretty lean. Um, but and, I, you know, and, Dylan and, will do whatever he has to do to get in the lineup. I mean, he'll figure it out. I like that. I like that. I like that you're just like, hey, figure it out. Yep. Yep. Um. You know, at what point – it's really tough, man. Your kid's always been the, the heart and soul of every team he's been on. You know, at what point – you guys might have to have a talk this year if you can't beat – who's got to beat Anthony? He's got to wrestle Anthony off, right? I mean, the guy's pretty good, right? Yeah, right. The guy's pretty good. Um, at what point do you got to sit down and talk to him? Hey, maybe you're not the guy, but you got to stay the course like – He's never dealt with failure, really. He got hurt last year. That would have been the first time he's really had to deal with super adversity, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, I don't know. He's he's always been able to figure it out. Um, and, or you know, we've always been able to figure it out, help him a little bit. Um, I, I, I don't know. I have a feeling he'll figure it out. It'll work out. I'm glad that you have confidence like that. And it's not yeah. everybody's first, everybody's first inclination is, wow, well, we got to transfer. No, you know, and, and I don't think you should think too far ahead. Right. I mean, things change so quick. You don't need to think that far ahead, but you get my point. Like, yeah, I goes, do. Oh, if you don't I do. make the team, we're leaving, you know, and that's, I really don't like that. <laughs> yeah. I'm not a fan of that. And you know what, man, I'm going to have to probably eventually swallow some of that as a dad coming up here. It's just how it is. Right. That's life. Yeah, you know, I hear about people quitting, you know, because they don't like the coach and this and that. And it's like, Jesus, get over it, you know. Every, to be blessed with a great coach, you know, doesn't always happen. But don't let that coach ruin your experience or, or a parent or whatever, you know. Chart your own path. Yeah, I got beat out as a fifth-year senior at Kent State, and I wanted to be done. I was like, I want to be done. And I remember one of my roommates, one of my the Graham guy, Mark Lensman. I was like, dude, I don't want to do this anymore. Yeah. He was like, he never started. And he was always behind like Nick Namath. He was always behind Mike Toller. He's two really good St. Ed's guys. And he was really good in the room, but he just couldn't. He just was no good when he got out in matches. He just struggled, man. It was real weird. Anyhow, he was on the team for five years and it was second semester. And I was like, oh man, I don't want to really do this anymore. He's like, he looks at me. He's like, you're the only reason I even stuck around to do this. <laughs> I was like, I got to stay on the team now. I got to stick it out now. I mean, my, my, I mean, I wasn't going to quit, but, you know, it's just like. Yeah, well, some of that's, you know, not, at the end of the day, look at yourself in the mirror, right, and saying you did what, what you could. Doing? It, had you have quit, aren't you glad that you finished? I'm really glad he said that to me. 
Yeah, for sure. I feel like, like, and I didn't, you know, it's not like I really, I did, but I didn't, right? Because there's other stuff. And I had gotten beaten out by like, I never wrestled Ben Rings off. He was a Marysville guy. And then I never, and I got beat out by Alex Camargo as a round of 12 guy. And they're just, these guys are they're good, good guys, all, all good guys, I'm saying. And I was like, student teaching i was getting up at five in the morning and going into kent roosevelt high school and like i was teaching all day and then i would go to practice like half an hour late and then my one of these other uh a guy already in ramadani a new jersey guy and then this other guy aaron miller a wapakoneta guy his brother beat stipe Maocic in the state finals the millers are from wapakoneta good people they would stay after and practice with you know what I mean? Like they didn't have yeah. to do that. They were freshmen. They were first year. I was fifth year. And it was just like, I was like, why am I even coming to practice anymore? Well, um, the week of the Mac tournament, we had um, phones in the classrooms at Kent Roosevelt high school. I get a phone call and my teacher's like, Hey, you got a phone call. And I'm like, my, my, the person whose class I was teaching for Nikki Marchman Boykin. She's awesome. Um, she's like, Hey, you got a phone call. And I was like, what? And, you know, it was before like everybody had a cell phone and that's how you communicated. I go and I pick the phone up and it's Jim Anderson. And he's the assistant coach then. And he's like, Hey Miller, how much do you weigh? I'm like, ah, 225. This is Wednesday before the Mac tournament. He's like, you got to wrestle this weekend. We need you. I was like, what? Ben rings got deployed to Iraq. Oh, he got yeah. deployed to Iraq. He was a fireman and he was a reservist. I forget what branch he was in, but he got deployed. I mean, he went to, he drugged people out of an embassy, saved a bunch of people's lives, but he had to leave and go to Iraq. And I filled in for him and I lost whatever, 30 pounds almost. Wow. I was eating soup every day and like just looked like my <laughs> life and like all fat and happy. But I was still practicing every day. You know what I mean? Like still practicing, yep. doing stuff in the morning and, you know, I was still working out and active. It wasn't like it's like right now. <laughs> so I went and I wrestled the Mac tournament and I, geez, oh, Pete, I, I had an All-American first run and lost to him by a point. And then I lost in ride outs to place. But you know what? I don't regret anything. You know what yeah, I mean? Right. I, right, I, right. Like you're saying, I really would have regret, regretted quitting. You know what I mean? That would have been like, yeah, you know, it's just like, and that defines you as a person, I think. And it's like your kid's got to realize that maybe he doesn't get in the lineup this year and maybe he doesn't want to cut his leg off to make weight, right? He's got to understand that there's bigger things in life. And I, I, I want to see your kid in the lineup more than anything. You know that. Well, uh, you know, just not to, to belabor the point, but um, when, um, I, when Dylan's positive and happy, I mean, he wrestles well. And – and confident so there's days when he'd go to term and go dad i feel great today and he would have a great day um he's kind of in that mode right now so i just think good things will happen last thing and i'm gonna let you go um did it go as fast as everybody says it's gonna go oh my absolutely my kids yeah. are doing four did it go as fast as everybody said it went oh absolutely i mean i even look at back at pictures you know three four years ago and and everyone looks so much younger and you know, the, the, the wrestlers. Um, yeah, it flies by. Yep. Yep. I know that when I started coaching and get involved that I wasn't getting shit done at home and it's like, you know what, just live with it, you know? Cause, um, yeah, it go, I know, I knew, I knew it'd go by, you know? Well, it sounds like I got to start hitting like the slow motion button here or something, man, because we, we had an active day today with my kids and, uh, it goes so fast. It's just, it's just Man, so you're fast. a great dad. I, I love everything you do with your kids. You're we, doing great. We put wood today. And love it. In, yeah. And ro loaded a whole trailer of wood. I'm going to send you a picture of it. All right. It was yeah. amazing. Like, I couldn't believe it. I took a video of it. He's really yeah. strong, like my wife, like super strong and powerful. I couldn't believe it. So, all right. Let me cut the video here real quick. I'll talk to you afterwards. Dom, thank you for the time. National and Middle School Duels. Give me the date on it real quick more time. November 13th, 14th, and 15th. Competition 14th and 15th. Weigh-ins 13th. Yes. Awesome, Dom. Thanks Be for the there. time. Hang, hang around here, all right? All right. Thanks, Zeb.